and it winds all the way out to um, the river, the Marco River, and opposite uh, Hideaway Beach, which is a, uh, a community in, uh, here on the island that's a gated community. That's where the sandbar ends, or the sandbar spit, <coughs> excuse me. And because of that, we've got a lagoon. Now this lagoon is not enclosed. As I said, it's open at that end. So we have the tide coming in, the water's going out. <laughs> because of that, we've got about 85, 86, 87 birds. Species that, of birds. A species of birds that either live here full time, all year, or just come here in the winter, as snowbirds do, <laughs> or they migrate through in the spring and the fall, or they just come up here, come here for the summer for nesting. So we'll see what we see today. It's a great spot for our wading birds, that's all the egrets and the herons and all of that, and also for our uh, sandpipers, our shorebirds, and our plovers. So we'll see what we see. Dumbo limbo tree, which is has uh, it's salt tolerant for um, uh, it can live in the dryness also. It has a nickname that they call it the tourist tree because it has the reddish bark and it gets peely too. It it has it's very um, they used to make the carousel uh, uh, out of that type of a wood. Poison ivy. Here. This is uh, uh, no. woodbine. Yes, woodbine. It also is called poison vine in Connecticut, at least oh. where I came from. Mm -hmm. And it's creeper. called Virginia creeper, no. too. Virginia creeper, too. Oh. And that one will Virginia give creeper. you, yeah. uh, if you're Fresh. allergic to about, yeah. two, about one in five person who would be uh, allergic to it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. <clears throat> the uh, natives and the early settlers somehow found out that if you grind up this vine, the sap, when it gets in the water, will momentarily uh, stun fish, so they will float to the surface, make an easy meal out of it. The pioneer children, um, when they played marbles, and they used these knicker beads. If you have a chicky hut, or if you're um, like that one right over there, in order to get it rethatched, you have to get somebody from the Seminole Nation to come and do it, because they're the only ones by state law that are allowed to cut these down. <coughs> <clears throat> this, what, what, Nora mentioned that the cowboys used those things to dry out their boots. I just wanted to mention that Florida was and is a major cattle producing state. In fact, the Civil War, as we say in the South, the War of Northern Aggression, would have lasted a much shorter period of time had it not been for Florida, because Florida cattle fed the Southern, the, the Confederate Army. Also, when you use the term cowboys, they really were boys because dad was out either trying to make a farm, build a farm, or he was fighting the Indians or fighting somebody or the next door neighbor. The boys were actually were maybe 12, 13, 14 years old who did the, the cattle tending. The cattle were very easy to come by because they were introduced by the Spanish in the 1500s and when the Spanish left, they didn't bother bringing the cattle back with them, nor did they bring the pigs back, which turned into the feral hogs that we hear about every once in a while. So if you were a settler and you wanted to start up a farm, you just rounded up a few cattle and that eating would be just gorgeous and the leaf is a bright, bright green. But these, of course, are just here. They're not fertilized or watered in any way. So they, that's what they would look like naturally. Sea grapes. Sea grapes. Sea and it does produce bunches of grapes, mm -hmm. but they are uh, not commercially viable because they, they don't all ripen at the same time. So, um, but the, they did use them for jams and jellies and things like that. Where it bloomed this October and November, when it blooms, it's, it's purple, pinky purple, and yes, it is it's magnificent. Mm -hmm. And it's so all see the remnants here. of it right here with the sun shining yeah. through it. Yeah. Those are the, uh, the remnants of the, the seeds, and the, the whole grass is all pink and purple. Gorgeous. What's the name? It's muley grass. M U H L Y. The native grass. They produce another rhizome, so the dune continues to grow. This is a major protection for the inland areas in term when you get a hurricane or a storm event. So sea oats, therefore, are a protected species because they do produce these dunes. 
They are also a pioneer plant, which means they're one of the first things that will take root on a barrier island like Marco when the barrier island first forms. Another uh, native pioneer plant is this one. This is beech elder, which is again salt tolerant, drought tolerant. It can be covered with water at a, for a period of time without, uh, without dying. And again, that one is part of the dune system that anchors the soil 